Good afternoon, friends. Stephen Benoon here with Israeli News Live, and uh, I am really at the point now that we need to get very serious uh, in, in preparing our minds mentally with the prospect of world war. And in the latest situation, this is, I've got TASS News, which is a Russian news agency, it's, it's translated into English for you. Uh, this is Foreign Minister Lavrov, and he is speaking here. Um, uh, I'm going to lower the volume on that right there. Uh, the Foreign Minister Lavrov is speaking in regards to NATO and letting NATO know straight up if you're going to continue to do what you're doing as far as in supplying these types of weapons to uh, Ukraine and you really want to fight and you don't want to contain it inside of Ukraine, he lets them know straight up, then let's fight. Uh, that's a very serious situation, friends. Uh, says, let NATO fight if it doesn't want to freeze the conflict in Ukraine. He says here, if NATO through the mouth of the Alliance Secretary General, Jens Stoltenberg, he's talking about, once again declares that they are against freezing, as they say, the conflict in Ukraine, then they want to fight. Well, let them fight, he says. The head of the Russian foreign ministry told journalists following the meeting of the Council of Ministers of Foreign Affairs of the state's participants of the Collective Security Treaty Organization. The head of the Russian diplomacy stressed that Russia is ready for this. We have long understood the goals of NATO and the situation around Ukraine. These goals were formed for many years after the coup. Now NATO is trying to implement them, he said. And so, Foreign Minister Lavrov is letting NATO know, you want to fight? Then let's fight. Uh, that's pretty bold right there. And now, if you remember, uh, a couple of months back, we were already telling you that the, uh, the, the U.S. and their AI technology that kind of predicts which way these wars are going to go, that uh, they were looking at the very real probability, and again, I want to stress probability, that doesn't mean that it will happen, but the probability that Russia may very well strike Germany by the fall of the year, escalating this fight into a global war. But the problem is, it's not so much Russia, is we're having, we're having NATO that's provoking everything. Now, what is, what is Foreign Minister Lavrov talking about to begin with? Sergei Soyhu, who is the defense minister of the Russian Federation, he goes in here, he talks about the HIMARS and the Storm Shadow missiles uh, being used outside of the uh, MND zone and will entail immediate strikes and decisions making centers in Ukraine and will mean the full involvement of the United States and Great Britain in the conflict. Okay? That's Sergei Soyhu who's saying that, the defense minister of Russia. And... So the situation clearly is heightened. This isn't this isn't President Putin now. This is the defense minister of the Russian Federation speaking, the general in regards to this conflict broadening just like the foreign minister of Russia is speaking about this. And obviously, NATO has not been afraid to strike outside of Ukraine already. Russia, the Russian uh, country itself has been hit direct, directly on multiple occasions. And of course, they're always saying that Ukraine is doing it. Ukrainian troops are just sent to the front lines for slaughter. That's really the only thing that they're doing is just slaughtering the Ukrainian troops, which goes back to Edward Hudos and what he said about this war in Schneerson and the whole releasing of that information that they would pit the Russians against the Slavic people uh, of Ukraine. And of course, that would entail then not just keeping it inside the borders of Ukraine, but if they're really wanting to target the Slavic peoples for annihilation, as he clearly has defined, that is, Schneerson defined in his speech that Edward Hudos published, then, of course, Slovakia, the Czech Republic, others will also be brought into this battle one way or the other. So this is a major escalation. And, you know, I've even heard that 
you know, we can expect by the end of 2024, now we're going into next year, to be into a full-blown nuclear war as this conflict begins to escalate. So, <clears throat> in saying that, let me share with you, um, uh, there's, let's see, there's uh, one other one here. This one here, this is on Twitter, U.S. Civil Defense News. The update, Russian Defense Minister General Soy Sergei Soyhu states that the U.S. and NATO will be fully dragged into the conflict when Ukraine forces hit Russia, Crimea, with U.S. NATO-supplied missiles and weapons. They've given, they've given their red line. And you can count on it. The, if NATO knows that, they're going to do it anyway because they want to drag Russia into a conflict. And everything that I've heard thus far from different sources that I have, different parts of the country and everything, and that is, it's going to happen. They're going to do it. In fact, let me just share something with you uh, that just comes to my mind here as I'm speaking about this particular situation to hear to you as well. Um, let me find it here real quick for you. Um, there is, <clears throat> there's going to be a false flag and it's going to be an anthrax false flag. Mm. Can you imagine that? We're going to have an anthrax false flag event. Wonder where that might happen, right? Think about it. <clears throat> and we already know that when it comes to anthrax, a, that was considered a Middle East chemical weapons type of attack. But if there's going to be a false flag, that means that NATO will probably be the one behind it. In fact, if you recall the, uh, the dam break, and listen, we can't just pull that up real quick here. The dam break over in Ukraine. Um, that was done not by Ukraine, not by Russia. All right, neither one. That was done by NATO. And it was done intentionally in order to blame it on Russia to make it look like Russia was doing it. And again, as I've said before, don't think that Putin has clean hands in this fight. He doesn't. But the Russian and the Slavic people of Ukraine have been pitted against one another because they want to eliminate their numbers. Uh, friends, I, I, I'm going to tell you something. Uh, let me just see. I don't know if they have anything. There's probably not anything out there about an anthrax false flag as of yet. But it's going to be coming. It's going to be coming. Um, listen. <clears throat> if there's ever been a time where I would tell you to get an EMP shield, now's that time. And, and, and it's nice to see that they still do have a sale going on. But at this point, I wouldn't care if it's a sale or not. I would encourage you to get one. If you haven't gotten it already for your home, for your vehicles, I would definitely get it. That would be the two main things. And I know there's people that have solar panel systems. Those things need it as well. Uh, I am def desperately going to try to put together the documentary we did from the people at EMP Shield. Uh, this weekend. I've got to get it approved by EMP Shield before we can release it. Some very valuable information in there, but I would definitely start shopping now. The home protection, the vehicle protection, the two top ones right there on there, generator, solar, wind, all that kind of stuff. I know you would probably need them for that as well, but I know they're, they're not cheap. I get it, and I understand that. Uh, they haven't been for motorcycles now, so if you want it for that, that's great. I, I, I get that as well. Just remember, though, to save $50 on it, you've got to put that INL50 code in there, that coupon code of INL50. That'll save you 50 bucks. Plus, they're still doing their Memorial Day sale. It's going to go probably right into the July 4th sale as well. With this many things going on, and now, and I even, haven't even brought up Taiwan. Oh, my gosh. Taiwan, basically, uh, they got the, the green light. Let me see if I can pull that up. 
Uh, I saw that tweet earlier today. Uh, yeah, here we go right here. Breaking Secretary of State Anthony Blinken gives China the green light to invade Taiwan during his visit to Beijing, China. We do not support Taiwan independence. Listen to that. Like, listen to that, right? Let's listen to this. Real uh, Taiwan, quick. I reiterated the longstanding U.S. one China policy. Uh, that policy has not changed. It's guided by the Taiwan Relations Act, the three joint communiques, the six assurances. We do not support Taiwan independence. We remain opposed to any unilateral changes to the status quo by either side. We continue to expect the peaceful resolution of cross-strait differences. On Taiwan, our... There you have it. I told you a long time ago, and of course it was back and forth. At one point they were going to take and defend Taiwan, and then the next thing you know, Biden is telling the uh, corporations there, you got two years to get your assets out of China. We know that that was really said because people, even with EMP Shield, were telling us about companies that were in China that were breaking ground over in their area, getting putting in manufacturing facilities that once operated inside of Taiwan that are trying to get out of Taiwan. We may pretend like we're going to defend Taiwan, but we won't. We will allow Taiwan to fall. China is probably one of the greatest threats to an EMP strike to this nation, especially with them constantly flying over their spy balloons. Imagine one of those being rigged with a nuclear device high enough in the altitude to create an EMP strike on the country. Not to mention the crazy lightning storms that we're having, especially down here in Florida. Unbelievable. Definitely worth having for that purpose as well. I'm constantly unplugging everything. Internet totally messed up down here uh, as well. The internet company is even admitting they know there's all kinds of problems going on. There may be outages and stuff that they're doing intentionally. We already know these things. But <clears throat> I strongly encourage you, like I said, if you're going to get an EMP shield, I think now would really seriously be the time to go ahead and do that. Um, friends, we're, we're, we're really getting into a serious hour, a very serious hour. And like I said, especially after what uh, Lavrov has said here and his in his speech here or his his comments here uh, that really heightened the alarm bells for me I already knew the intel from this from months ago but that definitely let me know they're on course they want to bring about a new world order uh, Russia is involved in that as well. Uh, the United States is involved. NATO is involved. You know, I mean, you, they can play all the church bells they want. They're all involved. They want to bring about a new world order. Israel is going to be the head of it. And of course, as we released to you just the other day too, Netanyahu is pushing forward with their reform uh, in Israel. That reform is part of the law goes forth from Jerusalem. All right. So make no mistake about it. Uh, that's going to happen as well. Let me just see if I can't bring that up real quick uh, for you again. He is definitely going forth with the reform uh, in Israel. That's going to happen. It's not going to change uh, the protests. They can protest all they want. That, In fact, even when they do the, uh, the protest, um, you know, it just goes to show that it's not going to stop Netanyahu. See, they paused it, but by pausing the legislative process, Netanyahu signaled a realization that winning the judicial reform battle, but losing solidarity and cohesion uh, within the nation along the way was a price too high and not one worth paying. Okay, that's what they said initially. But now those judicial reforms have been restarted again by Netanyahu's, as we shared with you the other day. Can't seem to find that right off the top of this here. But um, let's see. Anyway, we'll have to wait to see exactly what happens on that. But like I said, that's going to go forth. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Listen, if you really appreciate the work we do and you feel on your heart to support the work we do, we do need your help in that. Please consider donating online. You can click right there on Donate Online or by mail. Uh, with us being down in Florida, online is a little bit better right now, but that's however God lays upon your heart. We appreciate it greatly regardless. We're getting back and forth to Tennessee. We're normally down here three to four weeks, and then we have to go home for a week or two and then back down here again. So thank you and God bless you for your help in the work that we do.